This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at Sony's exhibit at E3 Expo. To my immediate right is none other than Richard Marks, director of Sony's Magic Lab. Is it PlayStation Magic Lab? PlayStation Magic Lab, right. Yeah. PlayStation Magic Lab it is. Honor to, to uh, meet you in, in person. Congratulations on the continued excitement around Morpheus. So, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Morpheus head-mounted display. How did, how did it come to be? Well, we were actually um, working on PlayStation Move back in 2008, 9, and 10. And once we made it, a lot of the guys in the in Sony that had always wanted to do virtual reality took the PlayStation Move and mounted it on their head and then added a display in front of them. And they kind of had a really poor man's VR system right away. So by having stereo here and you know the tracking system here, they were able to make it. And a few different groups within PlayStation started doing that separately. They all started talking to each other got elevated and then our management got excited about it and then it became a real project. You know, it's it's kind of a, I think it's a myth that it was a recent excitement in Sony. I think Sony has a long history in VR. I mean, you you had some involvement in, in stereoscopic 3D, if I'm not mistaken. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right, so stereoscopic 3D in games, we had uh, you know quite a big push for that inside uh, PlayStation. And a lot of the same technology that's used for stereoscopic games actually directly translates to the rendering you need for VR, because you're really rendering a separate image to each eye for VR, and that's what you do for stereo usually too. Would you say the, I mean, the expertise that Sony built around 3D was easily transferred to, to the VR world? Yeah, some of the most key people of the Morpheus team were the same people that were doing 3D for PlayStation. I mean, I'd imagine that being a competitive advantage because with 3D, you know, it was a, a mixed bag as to how much expertise there was. But now with Sony's tenure in this, you 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 kind of lead the game. That's right. Those guys who did that work, you know, they can just put it on instantly. Go, oh, your game's cross-eyed. They'll know instantly, right? Whereas people who haven't don't have as much experience, it takes them. It takes a long time to figure out what's wrong with things, and those guys have a lot of experience knowing what's wrong with the rendering. So, now, on the topic of the Morpheus itself, so you were explaining that you know you were connecting the Move controllers to the head as a as a tracking mechanism. When when does this date? Like how how long ago was this? So in 2010 is when people started first making those kind of uh, poor man's VR sets, and but. Uh, all the way through the history of Sony, really, people have been putting head mount displays here and doing investigations with it. I mean, we made the Glastron a long time ago, right? But this is the first time we've really made a, a wide field of view system that's really targeted just for gaming. You know, the move itself is a key feature of this. I mean, it's a core technology that it seems like it just happened to be advantageous for this. Why is that the case? Well, the Move is really a 3D tracking device, right? And what we were really trying to do with it originally was let you reach into a 3D world in a game world and interact with it. Turns out doing that through a 2D display is very tricky because you, you don't have all the benefits of knowing. You, I mean, shadows help and stuff, but you really can't feel 3D through the 2D display. 3D display helped quite a bit, but you know that that still isn't quite the same because you can't kind of look around and see things from the other side. So once you combine it with VR, suddenly it's like the perfect controller for VR. You can really reach into the world and interact directly. You know, the the worst word in the VR world is latency. Yeah. And I, is there an advantage to this move technology that benefited? You know, you know, reducing the the problems of this latency word. Well, it just so happens the people on the move project, the move team really hate latency and we love 60 frames per second games so our focus on move was always to reduce latency as much as possible we always tell people to put their tv into game mode so they won't have any latency and then so we really worked on that a lot and and to do that one of the things we did uh the guy eric larson in our group worked on sensor fusion where he would take the all the data and then predict forward a little bit where things were going to be you can only predict a little bit to get rid of some latency but you know about 20 milliseconds you can cover up quite well with prediction so we already had that technology ready when we started working on morpheus just to put this in perspective as well when when i first saw a demo of move he was on stage uh, a, a former colleague and um his hands were shaking just a little bit, you know, the natural tremors in a hand, and you could see those tremors on the screen. And I imagine that sensitivity or that less, you know, that level of sensitivity must be very beneficial for VR. Yeah, it's really important to have the tracking really good to have a, a real sense of presence, so that you get that little bit of parallax. That motion is really important. So, what, what can you tell us about the optics? I mean, what you know, one of one of the big things in VR is this, you know, wonderful field of view that we're getting these, you know, this range of field of view that we never really had at a consumer level. 
ball. Um, for now, at least, what does Morpheus deliver on this front? Well, right now we have over a 90 degree field of view, and then, you know, that's all being done with a very small screen that's in front of your eyes. So the optics are what convince you that it's a, a wide field of view. So they have to do this big distortion to take this small image and then widen it. And so the way the system works is it pre distorts, and then that, you know, gets fed through the optics, and then you get a nice image at the end. You, you know, w w the other thing about field of view is that. Within the last few years, if you were going to get a, like 90 degrees or higher field of view, you'd be looking at like military grade equipment, which would easily run you in the tens of thousands of dollars or mortgage your house if you're lucky. But you know, this Morpheus and other technologies up and coming are relatively inexpensive, I think. So how are you doing it that it is manageably you know, affordable? Well, that is another great thing at, at being part of Sony. We have uh, access to some of the best optics people in the world. We make a lot of lenses and we make a lot of uh, display tech, uh, display glass. So they actually are really quite experts. And I, I don't know exactly know how it's being done so well, but <laughs> I'm but glad there, it is. I'm glad it is. It is. We're in that world now. Now, um, one of the, I, I think it's called low persistence. When you move around and, and you don't see any judder as you move around. Are, are you benefiting from low persistence with Morpheus? Are you looking at technologies like that? Well, currently, that's one of the things we're still working at. Our prototype has a little bit more persistence than we want it to have, so the screen has a little bit more blur, so we're working on that as a future improvement. Excellent, excellent. And um, now, what we're seeing as far as Morpheus, it's being, I mean, you were on Jimmy Fallon, if I'm not mistaken. There's actually, you should tell the story of Jimmy Fallon, what happened there. So you mean on the Tonight Show, actually? Right? My apologies, yes. Yeah, well, we showed a demonstration of the castle demo, and we actually had made a network version of it so you could have two players in the same virtual world together so they can wave together and things. And, you know, we wanted to show people VR, but it's really hard in VR to show people because they're not experiencing it in the same way the player is. So we, we decided that we would make an experience that would really, you know, Jimmy could get into it, and he obviously did, if you've seen the segment. He was really excited about it and was kind of going crazy. He was so overblown. There's a scene in the end where a dragon kind of appears, and Jimmy was like, <laughs> so yeah, it really, it's hard to capture, but I think we did our best. Very good, very good. You know, from the point of view of creating games, you know, I, I mean, you, I'm certain you work with several game developers in your in your day to day. It, are technologies like Morpheus or Morpheus in itself? Is it forcing game developers to rethink how they put their games together from the from the bottom up? We're really encouraging that. VR is so different because it feels like you're really there. That it's the gameplay needs to be different because of that. It's not just like a character is doing things. It's like you are there. So. I think the best experiences are the ones that are redone. They can leverage the assets that they already have from other games, and the gameplay ideas are carryover sometimes, but they really need to rethink the whole experience. Okay, excellent, excellent. Now, we're seeing prototypes, I got it. Like Morpheus, I mean, it's been well promoted. We're seeing it on TV, but is it considered still a prototype phase product? I mean, are we going to still see changes in it before it's finally released? Yeah, we think of it as a developer kit right now. So we're giving it to lots of developers, and we are encouraging them to make new experiences. Once those experiences are ready and we've tweaked the hardware a little bit more, we'll be ready you know, to make a release it as a product. Are the developer kits readily available to whomever needs them? Are there, how is it handled? So we're, we're in the process of getting them out to our developers. It's a, you have to be a PlayStation 4 developer to use them because it works with the PlayStation 4 hardware. OK, excellent, excellent. You know, now, if I, if I may, Prior to Sony announcing Morpheus, there was this, I would almost call it a nervousness that it was going to be like this big competitive market. I mean, if, I'm sure you remember the 3D days where everyone was like tooth and nail and for the same space. But I don't see that happening here. And I mean that in the sense that everyone seems to have their own little area in the market. There's no need to name names, but there's different na areas in the market. Do you see this as an industry growing as like a diverse industry with different players? Like what, what do you see happening? Well, right now there is no real commercial VR industry. So I think that's one of the reasons it's not very tooth and nail yet. We just want to see the industry grow overall. But also our situation is kind of unique because we're for our own console. So we have a kind of an ecosystem already built there that is really not threatening to anyone else and they're not threatening us. So I think actually we have some advantages and disadvantages of that, but I really like having the constraints of being on this known, really powerful system and not having to think about the 
you know, the whole rest of the world because of it. <laughs> We've seen the content, of course, on PlayStation 4, excellent content. Uh, I, I kind of know how you're going to answer the question, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Does PlayStation 4 have the horsepower to drive these VR stereoscopic experiences? We can't use 2D plus depth or these other, you know, shortcut technologies, I imagine. Do we, is the horsepower there to do it well? Yeah, we definitely believe so. I, I think it would have been hard to do at a date before PlayStation 4, but really with PlayStation 4, we're seeing such rich graphical worlds and we can render, you know, in high resolution, high frame rate. So I really, I think it's a, a good match for our system, our Morpheus system. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, yes, of course. Uh, is uh, any timeline and in in when we can expect an actual launch of Morpheus as a, as a full-fledged product? Well, like I said, right now we're giving out the developer systems, the prototypes to developers. We're seeing them and what, following their progression of making content. We're working on the hardware. We're not going to release it this year, we know that much. Uh, but once the hardware and the software are kind of ready, that's when we, we can give a good value to people. We'll, that's when we'll release it. And very last question, I promise. Is there still more to learn in VR? Oh yeah, there's a lot of more to learn, especially about experiences in VR. I mean, it's neat, because every time we try a new experience, we learn something new about VR itself. So I, I'm actually, it's, it's, that's one of the great things. I get to see all these new experiences. I, that's one of my favorite parts of my job, actually. Excellent, well, an honor. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV with of course, Richard Marks from, from Sony PlayStation. Back with more from E3, thanks for watching.